So, welcome everybody. This is going to be game number one in a best of five between Len and Dogao representing Heresy on the left side of the map in green and red. Right side is blue and the purple for uh, Kasva and Spring. This is uh, Emperor Wars Duo round of 16s. Game number one is Arabia and we have Kasva playing in Franks in blue, rushing up a stable with five Voyagers. We have a Spring playing as Berber, somewhat surprisingly. This is going to be their Archer Civ. Remember the draft was very weird and Spring uh, picked quite a lot of Cavalry Civs for their team. Other side is a lot more conventional civilization combo. We're gonna have Lan playing with Vietnamese in red. So he knows exactly where the opponent starts at, which is a nice piece of information to have. And in the meanwhile, Dogao is playing Indians, which is probably one of the strongest team game cavalry civilizations to play around with. And it appears that Dogao on the other side is not really going to go for a stable super early. In fact, he's just dropping the stable. And in the meanwhile, if you take a look at this one, Kasva is already sending in the scouts. Now, Lan is actually close to walling his base off because he's almost having a Black Forest type of a map. In fact, this could be an easy wall off as well for Lan if he hurries, and this could completely just reduce the use of those uh, scouts from Kasva to zero because it appears that uh, Lan is going to be fully walled in a record amount of time. Meanwhile, let's have a look at the archers. Archers and spears separating here. I don't like this one because Spring could just easily lose those archers to some random scouts running around. And the guy is also trying to wall himself as much as possible. There is an opening here that he needs to pay attention for. Something he does not see and that could backfire. And I think at one point they wanted to do a team wall here in between the players. But they will not have the time to do that. And Len does not see that forest on the north. So he's going to try and wall on to the edge of the map and it appears that the scouts will walk right in here at land's base kasva with free frankie scouts could actually hit the gold mine or the lumberjacks some of those scouts are weak but they could still pick off one or two voyagers indeed the first one goes down spearman comes in here to help as uh, kasva will just try to run away and be annoying as much as it is possible more and more scouts are coming in and uh, they are trying to do some more harassment on the berries this scout is going to get picked off by the tc but in the meanwhile, that's quite a lot of harassment, and we also have Dogao being quite exposed to the skirmishers. What skirmishers? These are archers and spears, and that's two scouts going down from Dogao. As I said, this series could actually go down to very, very minor details, and this start is actually better for Spring and Kasva. As I said, I don't like that Spring has his army kind of scattered, but if he can just concentrate his army and start pushing the berries here or potentially this wood line, then things could get pretty problematic for the Gao. Kasva still has some weak scouts within the eco of Lan, but more or less Lan has stabilized in this one. As Kasva is going for Skirms and the defensive tower on his gold mine for the time being, Skirms will be helpful at the beginning, but it's not really going to solve the issue. I feel like scale barring armor would be a little bit better solution over here for Kasva. And uh that spring five spears only three archers not the usual composition that you are trying to look at he also probably has quite a lot of defensive spearmen back at home and he's also adding scouts so weird so they are not really playing the traditional uh roles as there is going to be a hole on the north as well for lan one voyager gets picked off and the re reinforcements start flooding in archers coming forward so, Kasa will have to take a good fight against them with the skirms. Just a few skirms here without fletching, that's not enough. So the scouts will actually pop out. Scale barring on the way, but that's still quite a lot of uh, low HP scouts. In the meanwhile though, Spring is actually camping now the berries, which makes the food income for the Gao weaker. And honestly, what we are seeing here is two separate 1v1s. Normally in 2v2 you have an archer and the cavalry sieve, and what we see here is just as I said, two separate 1v1s. Kasva is playing Scout and Skirm, Spring is playing Archer and Spear, and there was not even a single moment when Kasva was helping Spring or the other way around. So it is just two separate 1v1s. Not something that you see very conventionally. Now let's take a look at this fight. Fletching is there for Kasva, but doesn't really have the numbers, but it's still skirmishers against archers, and this is going to be very cost efficient in the long run for Kasva. On the other hand though, Lan is actually getting closer to clicking up to Castle H here. Scouts could actually take this fight with the help of the skirmishers. Kasva is more or less walled here, and the problem for Spring is that he's unable to get through these walls. There is just no hope for him to hit the eco of uh, Dogao. Dogao is gonna have some idle time on the farmers, but it's not, that's not really a big deal, as it appears that this archer force is going to get cleaned up. Castle H coming in here for Spring. Look at Spring. As I said, he's a beast in Empire Wars. As this is going to be a cleanup, and you would think that Miguel, Dogao, and Lan are an extremely strong team together, and I do think that they are. But Spring and Kasva are extremely underrated as a duo. 
Imagine if they actually prepared and trained together for this. I'm not sure if they practiced, I don't think so, because they're just playing separate 1v1s here. Unless this is the grand strategy, but I don't think it is. And they don't really have a lot of experience together. If they would actually get a lot of experience together, they would be a pretty sick team in Empire Wars 2v2, to be honest. Because they are beating a pretty strong duo in this one. Anyways... Scouts trying to bash their way in. If these archers were here, this would be way better for Spring. Because then he could deny the second layering. And it appears that Dogao has walled the left side as well. Everybody is going up to Castle. The last player to click up though is going to be Dogao, which is a concern. And this is the moment when Spring is going to have to start massing uh, crossbows. Because camels will soon arrive. And in the meanwhile, we have skirmishers in here, and since this is two separate 1v1s, the skirmishers will be able to push back land. Normally in 2v2s, you cannot really go pure skirms, because the opponent is just gonna send his cavalry here, from the cavalry player, but Dogao is so busy dealing with Spring, that he cannot send any cavalry. And since he cannot send any cavalry, Kaswa is just going to push uh, land here with skirmishers, first player to reach Castle Age here is going to be Spring, going for uh, scaleboarding armor, Triple Stable Knights, now I disagree with this one quite massively. I mean, Triple Stable Knights against Indians is probably one of the worst things that you can do. If you go for a cheap Berber Camels, perfect. But you cannot go for Knights because the guy is just gonna have the Indian Camels and swing the battle back. I'm not sure what happened here to Spring. Maybe he doesn't realize he's up against Indians. But this is just a so weird decision here. Like, the power spike is going to be great indeed with the knights, but I don't think that they are going to be sufficient to win the fights in the long run, and they are kind of a wasteful investment. Luckily, as we're gonna have uh, some scouts picking off one voyager here, nice micro from the Gao. Luckily for him, he's gonna have uh, some sp spears around to defend the knights from the initial camels, but camels will still destroy the knights in the long run. Meanwhile, let's see what we have here for Kasva. Big force of skirmishers, but no elite for him, and those are crossbows now, so this is a fight that Kasva isn't going to win. He's going back into cavalry, triple stable knights with uh, scaleboarding very soon. Siege Workshop also coming in here, something that is not seen by land right now, and apparently the idea is just to kill the stables with the knights. Uh, can you... Anyway, you can add the Sif pick next to the player names in the overlay. Um, we will try. I will figure out a way to do that. There isn't really a lot of space. And, like, I don't have anything that would do it automatically. So I just... I can just do that manually. Anyways, um, this is good enough to destroy the stables. And these spearmen are clutch. If there wasn't any spears over here... Then, uh... The camels would just destroy the knights. Uh, by the way, I completely forgot that I actually have a tool to showcase the civilizations. If you type exclamation mark match right now, you are going to see the civilizations. So... Just like that. Here are the civilizations on chat. I just always forget to update the command. But you can see that Lan is playing Vietnamese, Dogao is Indians, Kasva is Franks, and Spring is Berbers. Anyways, here come the big Night Horde, and apparently Kasva is also going to divert his Knights to take this fight. Again, it's Camels against Knights, so I'm not sure how good this is for Spring and Kasva, but on the other hand, Berber Knights are super cheap, and you can just overrun Dogao here. Dogao is producing on two stables still, and this is actually... Six stables combined going up against two stables of Indians. So look at look at all those crossbows getting absolutely torn apart. This is just br brute force knights play. Triple stables from both players, and they just over on Dogao. Camels should be clapping all these uh, knights, but there isn't enough camels because the cheap Berber knights and then the Franks coming in here, and they are doing quite a lot of damage. Lan just lost the majority of his crossbows. Dogao is down to 5 military, and suddenly all those knights could shift their attention towards Lan, and the range is already going down thanks to the mangonels. This is paying off so well right now for uh, Kaswa and Spring. Monastery coming in here as well. That's not really going to be a big deal, but 
Lan has to rebuild his uh, ranges at the back, dropping additional town centers. Right now, Dogao is on two, soon to be on three, and also free for Lan, but that doesn't matter if you die. And that's a lot of knights to deal with. We have 14 knights for Kaswa here, and you have 13 from Spring. Spring has plus one, plus two, Kaswa also plus one, plus two, and also there is Mangonos, Skirmishers, and Dogao's camels are so far away, and you don't really have the numbers to fight against this much. If those crossbows are surrounded, then they are just pretty much dead. Sling is forbidden, Sling is allowed. Everything is allowed, uh, laming Sling as well in the tournament. The problem is that um, Sling wouldn't actually help here to anyone. There's the camels finally coming in, and if the Gao Gang get the camel numbers up high, then that's still fine, but I mean, look at Lan's eco. He's getting absolutely destroyed. Lan has 45 idols. 45 idols from Lan. He has no economy, and there is still rams, there is still mangonels coming in here. Few camels, this would be the moment where Spring needs to start adding camels. Because Spring just needs to trade evenly against Dogao's camels and let Kaswa finish off the rest. I really value the effort of this lion, by the way, look at that lion. The lion is actually chasing down the knights, actually, or the camels, through the entire map. And as the knights and camels clash over here, the lion is also trying to join the party. TC goes down, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is game number one, Arabia, in the hand of uh, Kasva and Spring, because I don't think that there is actually any way to come back into this one from uh, Lan. Lan's eco is absolutely in ruins, he's gonna get destroyed by rams here very soon. I like that Kasva is going for the siege workshop, so there is no mangonels to destroy the rams. Dogao is coming in with even more camels, as I said, Spring needs to start adding camels himself, or crossbows, something that can deal with camels, and they should be fine. So, in this very moment, Lan is going to lose that siege workshop, Rams can easily destroy the ranges, Rams can easily destroy the town centers, and just look at the economy right now for Lan, and there is just more knights flooding in. By the way, behind this one, Spring actually is a free TC boom, and uh, Kaswa is playing this one with one TC only. Kaswa actually has a better Voyager count than Spring with one TC, which isn't really great for Spring. Probably had some idle time on those town centers, but still, Spring is absolutely smashing Lan's army here again. If he can get a nice round, that's perfect. And uh, right now, that army just sacrificing himself so the Voyagers can actually kill the Rams, but still. Lan is down to 48 eco, Dogao is trying to help as much as possible with the camels, but either pikes or camels will actually be a game decider here. You just need something that can deal with Dogao's camels and that is it. Preferably pikemen or, as I said, Spring's own camels. Now, Dogao has a crazy camel, art, camel number and it's 85 eco for Dogao. I'm not sure if Dogao can actually carry this himself, but we could see Lan just slinging him right now, and I think that's probably going to be the plan. He's still producing some crossbows, and honestly, Indian camels are still beastly. They could beat back brute force night play. Spring is finally f um, switching into camels, that's what he has to do. I think he should have done that a little bit faster, because, as I said, you can actually take some fights with knights against camels as long as you have the numbers advantage, but they are never going to be very efficient, and Dogao has a crazy eco, it's 90 one villagers, that's the best in the game by far, four stables coming up for him, and stopping Indian camels is insanely hard, they have anti-building bonus as well, so all you need is just to rush in here and start knocking down buildings, tides could turn, and that would be a massive blow to Kasvan Spring, crossbows still missing ballistics over there for land, and as long as the crossbows are alive for land, they can snipe down, um, Spring's camels, and that's a bit of a concern, I would say, for Spring. Also, camels coming in here for the Gao to try and intercept the reinforcements. Plus one, plus two over there on his side. And let's stay... Let's see this fight. Scorpion comes in here for Kaswa, lands some nice shots on top of the crossbows. But still, there is so many camels over here. You cannot take this fight against this many camels. There's no way you can actually afford that one. You need a lot more camels for Spring. But Dogao is at a crazy eco, 93, and Lan is the only player with 53, but I mean, Lan is rebooming quite nicely. This might not be over just yet, Scorpion landing a lot of good shots onto the Scorp, on the crossbows, but it's not enough if you don't have enough camels to deal with the camels from Dogao, and Spring trying to even the odds, and apparently this succeeds, but this is buying time for Lan to reboom. This is an excellent game number one, and... 
as I said, the major concern here is that uh, Springs camos are cheap, but in the meanwhile, the Gao is gonna have way better camos in the long run if this goes into Imperial. But we'll have to wait and see for that. The other thing is that Springs camos are vulnerable to archers, and Land has a lot of archers over here. Left side, more and more camos streaming in here for the Gao, and this could be just the Indian power. I honestly didn't think that there is a way back for uh, Lan and the Gao, but apparently Indians can be this strong if you have the camels, and it appears that Spring started adding camels way too late. Now he's adding pikemen. It's still not over for either side, because if Spring starts pushing uh, the Gao with pikemen, things could get really problematic for the Gao, because right now Lan is unable to help the Gao. His crossbows are so far away, but in the meanwhile, Spring and Kasva 82 and 71 villagers respectively, and Lan is actually rebooming up to 61. The tower goes down on Kasva's gold mine, and uh, Kasva is slowly dying. It's 6 military for Kasva, 21 for Spring, 48 for Lan, and 34 for the Gao. The Gao and Lan are actually doing this one, and it appears that the Indians were just way too much to handle for the saves of uh, Spring and Kasva, because right now. It's the Indian Camels that actually won those fights against the Knights, and now there is no Knight numbers. Camels being unleashed here, but there is enough crossbows, I believe, from land to kill all these Camels from Spring. Spring trying to stream in some more Pikes and uh, Camels, but as long as these crossbows are here, there is not really anything that Spring can do. And indeed, this is a crazy game, just 27 minutes, but it appears that this is already going to be a great series. GG is called... So, with that, that is game number one. Amazing game, I have to say. Probably one of my favorite uh, games. Because this was almost over. Like, Lan was so dead. But then the camels arrived for the Gao, and things turned around. Looking at the KD, the Gao crazy KD, despite the fact that his start wasn't great in the game. And, uh, yeah, look at the buildings destroyed. Kasva destroyed seven buildings, just started smashing Lan. And, uh, in the meanwhile, Dogao, 110 villagers. And, uh... Yeah, 110 villagers and Indian camels, not something that you can fight against them. Just look at the swing. This is where Dogao unleashed the camels and suddenly things started to go bad. And honestly, Lan also deserves a lot of credit for being able to contribute even though his eco was severely damaged. If you take a look at this, he was constantly increasing his military numbers, despite the fact that he took seri serious losses. So that is game number one. In the hands of heresy. One suggestion. Uh, yeah, we are actually working on the font thing. We're working on the font thing. A lot of people did feedback that. Alright, so we are going to have game number two over here. Alright, um, sorry, I just uh, had to remind the players to use the appropriate uh, colors because uh, some maps, like Cape of Storms, for example, are fixed position. So what that means is that the pocket player is always, I think, green and uh, red. And uh, if you play with other colors, things might actually get messed up. So, yeah. Okay. 
So, Spring and Kaspa going for their first home map. Let's see what they will decide. And they go Kawasan. Now, I remember Spring losing on Kawasan, right? In the Red Bull Volo qualifiers. When Spring played Kawasan, I think he completely ignored War and just played it like Arabia. And I think he lost that way. Was it Spring versus Dogao Red Bull Volo 2 qualifiers? Do I remember that right? I do remember Spring losing on Kawasan quite badly. Is it live? Yes, it's live. It's me. Hello. I'm doing this right now. Live and everything. So. That much. And, uh, okay, Kawasan. Uh, where is that? Where is it at? So, looking at the civilization draft over here. We have uh, Berbers and Franks. And on the other side, we are gonna have uh, Indians and Vietnamese taken. Oh, Ornlu is back. Okay, uh, I'm gonna jump back and cast with Ornlu. Uh, apparently, he's back from AO Olympics. So sure, I'm gonna take the Wolf as my co-caster for the remaining games. Um, let me just jump back into Discord and stuff like that. Uh, you're not gonna predict the saves? Uh... Well, Aztecs, Teutons, probably, versus Japanese, and Magyars, maybe? Or Malians, yeah, probably Malians, Japanese, or Malians, Malay, would be pretty fun. Alright, I will need to jump back into Discord with Ornlu, and we'll welcome the wolf back here. All right, look who's back. Guess who's back. Indeed. So I heard that the final AO Olympics game wasn't really as good as uh, you expected it to be. But I hope that this series is going to be great. And I'm not sure if you caught the first game or not from this series. Uh, I actually, I, I super sped through pretty much the entire game. So I saw the, the most important bits of it. Yeah, so I think that Spring and Kaswa can be legit as a duo, but in this one, they just played two separate 1v1s. They almost won it, but then, you know, Indian Camels and Dogao Booming happened. Maybe if they hit the Cavalry player first instead of the Archer player, it could have been uh, completely different. All right. that's, what I, uh, that's what I was telling my chat, is I think that if you're going for like a double Night All in, then it would make sense to focus the guy who's going for camels and just never never let him get up and running as opposed to the crossbowman guy who you can kind of deal with later and crossbows are also much harder to reinforce uh the teammate yeah you can defend against uh that with manganols as well so there's a lot of options to defend against crossbows much less against camels if you are uh going for a double knight all in indeed but there is still a decent chance for Spring and Kaswa to make this very, very competitive as game number two is up. I'm gonna welcome everybody to game number two in a best of five in between Spring and Kaswa versus the Gao and Lan. This is the Empire Wars duo round of 16s. This is the first home map of Spring and Kaswa, which is Kawasan. Lan is playing Ethiopians in green, the Gao is playing Malians in blue. On the other side, we're gonna have Spring as Khmer in green or purple. And red is going to be Kaswa as Aztecs. What are your thoughts about the civs? Um, you got the uh, the African duo for uh, Lan and Dogao, but you know it's a cavalry civ plus an archer civ. Malians kind of being your uh, insert cavalry civ, but also good on these hybridy maps like Kawasan. And then Aztecs just kind of a good civ, and Khmer just kind of a good civ. Uh, I think this like Empire Wars is obviously just a much more aggressive format, and I think that. I, if it goes up to like elephants, then like Malians really have nothing to deal with that. But I don't expect it to go that far. Yeah, I think that this is aggressive enough to snowball into a certain scenario because you have a hill in the middle and uh, the front of your base is pretty close to that hill. So once someone gets control over the hill, they can just attack down hills and that's going to be pretty strong. And uh, it appears that Lan is going to war himself, going for uh, spears and archers over here. Um, the Gao going with Malians on the scouts build. One of the nice things about having Malians here is that you save a lot of wood at the beginning. If you go for docks as well, like and stables. So 
Marlin is one of the sieves where you can open with a stable on archer range and still drop a dock at the same time. Um, yeah, uh, Spring doing a little bit of harassment onto a villager of Dogao's, but it looks like it'll probably be fine. So something I definitely want to ask is, do Malians like start with extra wood? Like, do they get the wood savings on all the houses and barracks nope, and stuff? No, they don't. That they would... Oh, oh wait, um, yeah, but, yeah, resources don't. I feel like that should be the case, right? Um, yeah, technically it should, but it's a little bit inconsistent. They don't actually get the extra wood that they would normally save from their buildings. On the other hand, um, talking to Nikov, for example, Nikov specifically said that Mali is actually one of the best saves for Kawasan. Because it's a massive advantage that you can open with military as well and contest the war at the same time. Now, Lan is gonna have quite a lot of archers moving into Spring's base here and I don't see any defense from Spring. Luckily, he can just jump into houses with Khmer. <clears throat> Uh, definitely, and okay, looks like those guys will be safe. This spring has a nice little farming community uh, to the west, but uh, no house. So it's like investing in the tower. I feel like a house does the exact same thing, but, you know, it's not the investment in a tower, and towers also take a long time to build, and now you're fleeing for your dear life, and you're sad. Yeah, now spring is gonna have bloodlines coming in here okay, soon, on, yeah. but he will still lose a few villagers. It might be worth pointing out that the only player who is not on water right now is Kasva. Everybody else is actually up on water. And Spring is taking Kasva's this fight water. before Budlines. That's an awful fight for Spring. He just lost all his scouts. Oh, uh, Spring. Spring! Yeah, that's that's a complete fail. And again, like, Spring could have just built a house. I think he had five villagers. He could have just garrisoned the house and he would have been totally fine. Uh, but he might have forgotten about the bonus, because that tends to happen a lot. But I, I did just want to point out that Kasva is actually on water, uh, and has two docks and five fishing ships. In the oh, he's actually a northern pond, that's why I didn't notice. So, there's actually an uncontested pond. Yep. Oh, Lan is the one that's not on the water, right? I thought that he's actually on the northern pond, but no, that is uh, Spring. And, uh, well, the Gao is kind of fully walled. The walls are pretty ugly, to be honest, but they actually work. But... He's also going to clean up Kasva's force here in the middle. Those scouts, without a single upgrade, still able to clean up quite a lot of those archers. And uh, as good as the start for a previous game was... This is looking pretty bad for Spring and Kasva. I'm just to uh, answer... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, I actually had a question. Like, how is the, uh, the seeding done in terms of... It's a single limb bracket, right? So... I assume this is one of the highest seed teams versus one of the lowest seed teams. Um, yeah, basically, I think uh, Miguel, Dogawa, and Lan are something like seed 5 or so. So seeding was done based on uh, the performances of the players in RBW1, RBW2, um, the qualifiers, and also like recent performance and major tournaments. So for example, if there was a team that had uh, a player that performed very well in Hidden Cup, that was also taken a tiny bit into consideration. For lower-rated teams, it was mostly ratings used. Okay. Um, but it was like the highest seed versus the lowest seed, second highest seed. Yeah, absolutely. Seed, but... okay, okay. This is why Hera and Leary are getting uh, ACCM and Bad Boy. Oh, feels bad, man. Also, holy gold miners. 17 gold miners for Kasva? Oh, well, yeah. He, he's actually looking out for that gold, and he's going into Castle here. This might be a triple Barak Seagull. Play. There's the second Braggs being constructed, but I can see him going for triple Braggs, he goes very aggressive, secure a foothold in the middle, drop a monastery, pick up all the five relics, which is going to be a massive advantage and gold boost as well, and the guy is going to drop the light hand side lake, so he's gonna have some fish over there, or if he really wants to do some funky plays, he could transport some stuff around into the back of Kaswa's base. I mean, I think that's totally legit. I mean, Kas was double walled over here in the south. And look at that triple stable play here from Dogao. And he's even second docking uh, the right hand pond. Uh, Malians just feel so buttery smooth to play with all of those wood savings and the extra gold you get early on. Uh, it, I don't know. It just, I, I really like playing Malians, man. It feels good. Yeah. What is also pretty nice is uh, that Ethiopians get the free pikeman upgrade, which is also an extra assistance against. Uh, Springs Khmer, and I do assume he wants to go for elephants, yeah. most likely, but that's quite a lot of Ethiopian crossbows with pikes, and Spring kind of has to run for his life again. Yeah, I think with Ethiopians, it's totally fine to go, like, full MBL style and just add a ton of uh, spearmen in Feudal Age. You just instantly get pikemen for free in Castle Age. 
Uh, kind of like how Turks can add in a bunch of uh, scouts in Feudal Age and get the free Light Cav upgrade. Kind of a similar concept. Um, and this is looking rough for Spring, who thinks he's still playing Hun Wars in 2014 and is not walling. Well, you don't necessarily have to wall. The interesting thing is that this map is extremely easily wallable, to be honest, because you have a bunch of forests, spawns, and everything, as it appears that Lan is going to try and push Kasva. It might be worth pointing out that Kasva is a crazy fish boom in comparison to everybody else. Dogao was is a decent eco, but... Oh! Oh! I just caught the final second of that blast, but look at that! Oh! That's a lot of dead bodies, and all of that army is going down the drain. And if you just take a look at Kasva, I mean, he's facing knights, but that's a lot of eagles. Uh, upgrades are pretty solid as well, plus one, plus two. Uh, knights are at plus one, plus one, and are generally fairly tanky. It's a pretty close fight. Oh, but with a couple spearmen being added in, uh, that actually should be able to make all the extra difference. Yeah, I think this could actually work. Again, this is not going to be sustainable in the long run for Kasva, so you cannot just spam eagles in front of knights. That's not going to work. But he's uh, actually dropping double monasteries point. in the middle, something that Dogao is probably not going to pay attention for because he's trying to push Spring or Kasva here. And honestly, since Lan lost the majority of his army and uh, Spring is pushing in here with quite a lot of elephants, there is still quite a lot of crossbows, but if we know that elephants are insanely good for Khmer, and they can just steamroll everything. Yeah, I always have to wonder, like, do elephants feel OP because they're elephants, or because you just, like, see them from Chimera all the time and it just feels so oppressive? But Spring, very good upgrades on them. Already has uh, Bloodlines, plus one, plus two, and uh, I assume Husbandry, just by looking at them, Trot, Trundle. Uh, but yeah, Kasva going to be able to grab with the Relics in the middle, always quite nice, and I assume why you even pick Aztecs on this map to begin with, because the Relics are very easily available and sort of incentivize early map control. Um, but still a little bit rough at home. The couple fire ships from Dogao are making things a little bit annoying. Yeah, indeed, they can just break through the walls um, without really a chance to stop them. And both side walls break so easily that you can just get through those and uh, get some knights in there. And this distracts Kaswa quite a bit. That's a lot of eagles that are kind of tied down by this. But I mean, still, Spring is able to get his elephant numbers up. And if you take a look at the ecos, Spring is the only player who has a slightly lower eco. In fact. Kasva was a pretty low eco now that I take a look at that, but it's Aztec eco on the other hand and Khmer eco, which might actually be, in general, a little bit more efficient than Ethiopian and Malian eco. Um, uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, my concern right now for Kasva Spring is that the two armies are very. Segmented. Oh, the guy is running into the pikeman here. Ooh, that's not what you want to be doing. But in a situation where the two armies are segmented, I feel like it's going to end up being a lot better for uh, Dogao and Lan. You can see so many elephants taking so much damage to the pikemen of Lan. Yeah, that's not oh, great, man. but you can fall back to the hill and uh, have Kasva's monks heal your elephants. That's something to pay attention for, but Dogao has a lot of knights. They need something that is anti-cavalry here, so... Oh! They, they forgot! They forgot the conquest setting! Look at the relic victory! Wait, okay, so like if you switch game modes in DE, you go, uh... Oh, okay, uh, would you like to use the recommended settings for this game type? I wonder if they hit yes, and for some reason DE thinks that its uh, standard victory is uh, actually standard, when it's definitely not. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's going to have to ungarrison one of those relics, because technically the game is uh, Conquest, and you know... You can't just win a Conquest game mode based tournament in a non-Conquest game. Let's see if you can actually cluster up those crossbows. It's not gonna happen. And if the Eagles can get a good surround on those crossbows, this might just be over here. It's definitely not great. A lot of the pikemen dying to the Eagle Warriors, I think, very importantly. Uh, also Spring adding in some Knights, adding in some Scorpions, which is definitely what we want to be seeing in this situation. And the crossbows are running for their lives, man! Yeah, and... Oh, uh, beautiful, beautiful split. Oh, from look, at, look at that surround. Look at that surround. That's going to be a massacre. All the crossbows oh. could go down. I mean, the Scorpions land some nice shots before they are taken down by the Knights. By the time the Knights arrive from the Gao, it's too late. And uh, looking at the Ecos, Kasva and Spring are quite outnumbered, but in reality, 
as the pikemen sink some fire ships on the right side. You're just gonna have a way better army. Look at that, Sorivo 8 to 29 for Kasva and Spring. And it's a combined 18 for the Gao and uh, Lan. Yeah. So, and of course, the five relics uh, to boot. Yeah, that's also true. Five Aztec relics is also a massive amount of gold. There is apparently some uh, slinging. Is slinging allowed? Yes, um, slinging and laming is both allowed. You don't really lame, though, in Empire Wars, of course. Yeah, I didn't think laming would be that much of an issue. Yeah, like, technically you can do, like, I don't know, wall in the gold mine type of la laming, so every type of laming is allowed. But it is a slinging that's also allowed. And we have Imp coming in here for Kasva. If he gets to Elite Eagles here, I think that's pretty much over. Before the Relic Victory would actually kick in. Now, don't worry everybody, I really hope that this is not going to be a Relic Victory, and I'm pretty sure that uh, they know that they screwed this up as well. And what they will probably do is just ungarrison one Relic, 10 years before the counter would actually, you know, end. And then it's just gonna restart once he regarrisons it. Yep. Uh, big Night Raid, though, coming in for Dogao. Gonna be getting some work, doing some raiding. And yeah, across the board, the Ecos are far, far stronger for um, our Heresy team. And I think this is really a problem that they're not doing something more proactive. Um, our cost one because their armies are way better right now. So they're just gonna chill in, hold in the middle, healing up the elephants while the, the big swordsman switch comes in here for Dogao. And this could be a bit of an issue. Yeah, that's a lot of men at arms flooding forward. And it could go into a full castle age. I mean, Kaswa still doesn't have his imp upgrades, and technically he can go for his own swordsman, especially in, in Imperial, but he needs time to tech into that. He's going for it. He's teching it to champion as well. But as you said, um, we could just see Kaswa running inside the eco of land with like 20 eagles and just killing 20 villagers, right? Yeah, Lan has like an army that's almost entirely pikemen, uh, which aren't great versus eagle warriors. So, yeah. And those that's... are champ scars, so archers don't help here. Uh, no, they don't, but I don't think anyone has any archers on Kaswa's spring anyway. And bye-bye, TC. Yeah. Probably some small hope that that was like an imp TC for Dogao, but unfortunately, uh, no dice on that one. Yeah. Well, if the elephants come in here, that's still fine. I think what should happen right now is Spring holding against the long swords with the elephants, and Kaswa just flat out running into Lan's Eco and destroying it with elite eagles. Because long swords aren't great against elephants, and the eagles could just absolutely smash everything that Lan has right now. Lan has like pikes, and that's it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. But Land is actually using the opportunity to take the middle and not do a whole lot with it. But uh, running away, uh, Scorpion's not going to be especially great against the uh, five pierce armor on the swordsman. But, you know, they're going to get cleaned up eventually. Then that's a lot of chicken suit men there for Kasva. Yeah, it's 40. It's actually just Elite Eagle. It's not even a plus four armor. And uh, what's even more important, look at those infantry from the Gal. Look at them marching. Pikemen coming in here to reinforce. And uh, that's the plan here. They just want to have the pikemen clean this up. But this just gives time for Kasva to remass his uh, ego numbers. We also have uh, Imperial coming in here for Lan. The only player who's not going Imp is uh, Spring. And I think, honestly, Spring is kind of not doing a whole lot in this game, honestly. Like, he's had some elephants, and they've been, like, all right, but not amazing. And Zico just seems so, so weak uh, compared to what it should be. Like, Kaspas is worse right now, but that's because it's been raided all game long. Spring hasn't been raided since Feudal Age. Yeah, Lan is also up to Imperial. I think that you need Eagles inside the Eco of Lan, as Lan is switching to Shoro Warriors, which will be, again, amazing against Eagles. Kaspas is just throwing away all those Eagles to Longswords, man. I mean, those Eagles are Imp Eagles. But the long swords are still pretty efficient against them. By the way, indeed, the Relic Victory is now gone because one monastery is dead. But look at Kasva. He's down to Talon Military. Imagine if, like, 20 of those eagles run into the eco of Lan here. Or maybe even just run into the eco of Dogao. Whichever works. Because Dogao has a slow army, so it takes quite a lot of time to catch up with the eagles. And uh, unless Spring gets into Imperial fast here, I think this might again be a game that was somewhat controlled by Kasva's team, and then just the victory stepped out of their grasp. Yeah, 
Definitely. Um, elite Shotel Warrior and Blast Furnace on the way here for LAN. Shotels are, are, are awesome as anti-eagle units. It's like almost their only function right now. I'd love to see Shotels get a small buff because they're cool. But against Eagle Warriors specifically, they are absolutely fantastic. And of course, mixing in some Halberdiers to help deal with the Elephantos. I think now that the Elephants deal less trample damage, I think this is a lot more viable than it uh, otherwise would be. And I think that things are looking pretty peachy right now if you're Dogao and Lan. Yeah, now, Kasva is switching into more and more long swords here, but as long as Spring is still in Castle Age, I don't think there is going to be anything uh, great happening for them. They might lose the middle. Now, the Elephants can actually find a nice angle on top of those long swords, but there is nothing that uh, can stop the Sholos right now. And, oh boy, look away, kids. That's going to be an awful fight for Kasva. Oh man, those. Those show tells, man. They just om nom nom eagles for breakfast. That's that's an absolute slaughter. I mean, they will get cleaned up by the elephants, sure, but look at the amount of eagles dying, and Kasva doesn't really have the eco to replenish them as easily as their opponent is replenishing their own armies. Oh, now two-handed swordsmen is in as the uh it, they just look so awesome, like the two-handed swordsmen marching in formation across the map. Yeah, it reminds me uh, of the stormtroopers marching from Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, I, I could definitely see that. Uh, but Land trying to get a castle established. Uh oh. Uh, so this is gonna go up. Battle. Oh nope. Is it? Is it though? Nope. Ninety-seven. That's a doubt castle. Yesterday we had the doubt castle at ninety-nine percent. Oh, feels bad, man. Yeah. What else is feels bad, man? Is that Kasva is going to die now? He has nothing to stop this. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, and there's the GG. Oh man. It's, if I had to just say one sentence about uh, the current performance of Spring and Kasva, I would say so close yet so far. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely see that. They do a really great job in early game. Great moves, taking uh, map control, gaining momentum. Beautiful, beautiful demo raft kill uh, from Casa. Like, that was sick. But they just don't know what to do with it, it seems. Like, they were idling about so much when they had their advantage militarily in the mid game. Whereas uh, Dogao and Land were just big chill and booming up behind it. And uh, they just kind of smashed them in Imperial Age. Yeah, basically, as I said, what was surprising for me that there was a time in the game <clears throat> when Dogao was switching into long swords. Where I could have just seen Spring sending the Elephants to Kasva's base to defend against the Longswords and just run straight into uh, Lan's Eco with the Eagles and uh, just absolutely destroy that. There was nothing that Lan could have done against those Eagles. The problem was that straight up fights were taken against Longswords with Elite Eagles and especially considering that those Elite Eagles didn't have uh, Garland Wars, they actually got smashed quite hard. Yeah, indeed. I'm just looking at the uh, the post game stats and uh, Dogao with a really sick food eco. Like when you're going for swordsman, like you compare that to Spring, who he had like 4k more food. Like you'd hope that the elephant player would have way more, but just Spring's eco was was not amazing. And I guess he was slinging Kasva a little bit, but uh, obviously not enough. Yeah, Kasva was definitely on, on being slinged by Spring, and it could have worked. The problem was that they were just. Um, trying to play for late game, and basically Kas was like, what, six Barax Eagles? That's kind of a Castle Age all in here with Sling. And they could have actually won this, I believe. They just needed to knock out uh, Lan. And remember that one fight where Lan lost all his crossbows? And neither of the Heresy players did anything. There was like, what, 40 military from uh, Spring and Kaswa, and there was like 15 from Dogao yeah. and Lan. That would have been a moment where the Eagles just need to flood in and start killing Voyagers. And from that point on, it just snowballs. I don't even think there was a castle up then. They just went back after winning a big fight. They might have thought they were in a better position economically, but they definitely weren't. Um, honestly, I think they might have thought that they are uh, in a worse military position. And that's why they went back. Maybe they thought, yeah, okay, that... the elephants are weak. Um, let's regroup, reorganize and push this one. But... It's very hard to determine for them if it's worth pushing, and that's like something that's very hard to judge, even for like the best of the best players. Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunately a little rough. I I, I still think they that Spring and Kasva can take a game here, though, and I'd, I'd like to see them do it. Honestly, I feel like 
um, they could even take multiple games here. I would dare say that they might they even have the skill set to win the series. They just need to decide. If they want to go for a late game, they can't go for like a 1 TC all in build. Or uh, if they want to go aggressive and early aggression, then they have to commit to it and make sure that they win that game. Yeah. Early, at least. Like they keep on going for like these mid game, like big, big timing attacks, which look like they're going to work, but there just isn't enough follow up because like they add like one or two extra TCs at that point, but then like they don't actually do enough actual eco damage to really justify the attack at that point, and then they're slower to imp, or they get to imp and they just don't do enough with it, and it's just like they run out of steam. Yeah, eventually they're just getting out boomed, basically. And at uh, that point, then they're, they're going to the Microsoft store at that point because they just uh, they just don't have Steam, man. Yeah, indeed. So the thing is that uh, if you remember game number one, um, if they went for uh, killing Blow on the Gao, just finish off the Camos player, then that could have been completely different. This one, um, if they just sent in the Eagles into Lan's Eco, maybe even the Gao's Eco. But I think Lan would have been easier to kill because Dogao had nothing to reinforce and Lan only had archers and pikes against the eagles. Lan could have lost like 20 villagers and then he's so much behind that it actually justifies the 1TC play from Spring and Kaswa. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, what uh, is just the loser of every game picks the next home map? Yep. Or is it... Okay, yeah. Because some always... tournaments are like... Then the team that won game number one get to pick their home map, but uh, um, yeah, that's actually a weird uh, format. Um, honestly, I feel like it's better to have the team that lost the previous game pick it because, like, if you do it, okay, game number one loser is going to pick game number three home, or game number one winner is going to pick the game number three home map. I feel like Let's say if there is already a 2-0 advantage, you just give another advantage for the team that won game number one. With this one, it is always the team that is currently losing, or at yeah. least lost the previous game. That's uh, that's exactly what I did for OBNC. So I feel like that's a little bit better. I'm not against the other system either, so it's not really a big deal. But I feel like um, this is a little bit more uh, suitable for... Those teams that are weaker in a certain matchup, I feel like they need the advantage of being able to select the map. And this is how it works out. So, with that, we are going to have another home map for uh, Spring and Kaswa. What do you think would be a good home map for them? Um... I don't know your map pool, because this is the first series I've been casting. So what's the most aggressive map you have? Um, River Belt. Uh, I think I already told you the story that on River yeah, Belt... Yeah, you, yeah, you told me about that. Um, uh, I'm just opening up the page now. Aztlan, Cape of Storms are both pretty aggressive. Oh, you have Enemy Archipelago. Oh yeah, Enemy Archipelago. That would be... I, very I love good. Enemy Archipelago. Honestly? If you think about game number one, where they played two separate 1v1s, I think it might actually be reasonable for them to pick Enemy Archipelago. Yeah. I, it. Oh, this, this map pool is looking pretty great. So, like, Enemy Archipelago is a very, very meme map, and a lot of people hate it. But Enemy Archipelago is actually one of the maps that would be more than reasonable for Spring and Cusp in a setup like that. Because yeah, definitely. basically in every game what happened is that one of the players was actually pushed by Spring and Castle together and the other one was able to reinforce. So maybe they have better chances in two separate 1v1s, especially considering that both of them are pretty good 1v1 uh, Empire Wars players. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think that... Aztlan would be another choice, as it's a very, very aggressive, like, map control-centered map. So I think that would work, too. Um, uh, yeah, potentially. I think what you don't want to do is pick something like Twin Puddles. Uh, that's a bit more standard. Golden Pit, even, maybe. 
so you want very aggressive maps. Honestly, I feel like you are right, because in early aggression games, it seemed better for Spring and Kasva, but in late game, the Gao and the uh, Lan were just outperforming them, so you probably want a very aggressive map. For your yeah, certainly. Game. And like, they still have Mongols and Incas for civs, Bulgarians as well. Yeah, there's a lot of good civs remaining. In fact, I'm gonna take a look at the draft over here real quick. So... Khmer and the Aztecs being used. There's still Spanish for uh, Spring's team, I wonder. Incas and Bulgarians are available, Teutons are available, as you said. Mongols as well. Other side... Really, everyone except Chinese and Slavs are, like, amazing aggressive civs. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, Mongols aren't really amazing as an aggressive Civ in Empire Wars, I would say. At least not um, better oh, than Chinese. Oh, yeah, Empire Wars. Duh. Yeah. I, I, was, I was thinking RM mode, um, but yeah. Uh, everyone else can definitely still do a lot of aggression. Yeah, uh, I wonder if the Gao and... Like, if this goes into game number five... There is still a chance that Turks aren't really going to be picked, right? Because there is more civs than you can actually utilize in a series. There is six pairs of civilizations and only five games. So Turks might not even be used by the guy, but I'm really curious why that was a pick. Uh, Well, how many civs are picked in total? It's what, 12, 14? Uh, quite uh, yeah. a lot, actually. So two bands, and then you have uh, two, 30? four... 6, 7, 14, 28, yeah, 30, basically. Yeah, so 30 civs in total means all but 5 civs are picked. Yeah, but you don't have uh, civ like Tatars. For example, you still have the sheep, so Tatars actually have an okay eco bonus, they have the heal bonus, they have the tumbling bonus. So Tatars is somewhat surprising, as uh, we're gonna have... Apparently a drop. Feels bad, man. Yep, um, as Lil Modo is setting, um, they started, but it's a restart because uh, the start was bugged or wrong setting. So, but the map is, by the way, to win puddles, believe it or not. God damn it! <laughs> What's the one map I told you not to pick? I mean, at least it's consistent with, um, as. Aztlan? No, not Aztlan. What's the one? Kawasan. Yeah, it's somewhat consistent. It's actually a little bit different because you only have two pawns, and both of the pawns will likely be contested by both teams. So you actually have a lot less safer fishing eco. Um, plus, the players are a lot closer to each other in terms of teammates spawning, so reinforcing each other is a little bit easier. It feels kind of a bit like Lombardia with water. Um, a little bit. You also have the forest in the back, so it's a bit more defensive, like, in terms of land early on. And Twin Puddles is a classic map. I think it's actually just a solid map all around for 2v2s especially. Yeah, honestly, I'm somewhat surprised that we are not seeing Twin Puddles played a lot more frequently in tournaments. Like, indeed, in... Like, I think that in 1v1, Kawasan is better, because in the end, what you end up with is the same thing. You have uh, two players with two pawns, and you expect them to, like, fight for both, or fight for one, or ignore each other and have separate pawns. This is very, very similar to Twin Puddles, I would say, in 2v2. Well, the thing with Kawasan for 1v1 is it's just, like, Aztecs and Franks, right? Franks for the Forge Bushes and Aztecs for the Relics. All right, we have uh, a game over here. Twin puddles coming in here, and I kind of realized why the color or why the map went wrong for them. Very simple, because this map is also color coded so that the teammates spawn at the appropriate spots. All right, so welcome everybody. This is going to be game number three in a best of five between Spring and Castle versus the Gao and Lan Emperor versus the round of 16s. And as you can see. Twin Puddles, this is a version where you spawn on the opposite ed edges of the land always. So both of these spawns are contestable by both teams. As it appears that we have a sneaky villager from Lan. Look at Lan. 
He knows that this could be a very, very easily vulnerable map in the middle, so he's trying to sneak a villager, or was that just a misclick? No, he's dropping a dock in the middle. Casually. Seems kind of weird. You'd think it would be a bit more in a direct line from his base, but, you know, there are certainly uh, worse things that you can end up doing. And there's already a tower coming down for spring. Um... Where exactly? Oh, oh I'm nice looking goal. at Kaswa. Oh yeah, on defensive tower. I actually agree with that one because I feel like uh, your gold mine could actually get pushed here quite hard. And it appears that we don't really have a lot of walls from spring. The LAN is actually doing some walling, but not a lot. In fact, neither of the players are really walling an awful lot. And the only player who is contesting war is going to be LAN. Which means that he's gonna have a great fish boom. Two kills for the Gao in the meanwhile on the left side. Scouts already popping out and killing archers and skirms here. Uh, yeah, I mean, Magyars, I mean, you start in Feudal Age, get the cheaper scouts right off the bat, you get the free attack, obviously, so you can have a very strong push in that respect. Um, Chinese, kind of a weird pick at all, especially because you don't get the extra villagers, so it's like... Um, Chinese still have a great eco, and the Gao's uh, dock here might actually get denied by the Spearman and the Archers from Kaswa if he realizes what's going on over there. And, uh... On the right side, we will have archers coming in here for Lance. Kerm's in the party for uh, Spring, but he does lose his scout. With the heal, he should be able to take down the archers, though, with the help of the Skirms. Uh, well, uh, Lan able to retreat to this hill. I don't think he should give up the hill, uh, but it will force out, at a bare minimum, a defensive tower, so that is always quite nice. No plus one defense, though, does mean the Skirms have to be just a little bit careful. And even the Japanese spearmen can get some pokes in. But uh, eh, regardless, things are more or less uh, evening out. Lan with a Japanese fishing ship already. Double dock, though, play coming in for Kasva. And indeed, Dogao's dock was at least denied for a little bit. Yeah, that's actually pretty important. Kasva's spears weren't patrolling over here on the left side. So that means that they got just picked off. But Kasva is going to have the water. The problem, I believe, for them is that they're not walled at all. And that's a lot of Magyar scouts. Right now you can defend with spears, but once you have bloodlines on those Magyar scouts, they are pretty devastating even against spearmen. Kaswa might be fully walled, but I have a massive concern for Spring's safety here. As, by the way, he opened <laughs> with skirms. And just starting to add the stables for himself. Uh, yeah, I guess that is kind of surprising that you'd expect the uh, the Teton player to open uh, with scouts. As, you know, the Chinese player to go for archers, kind of like what you would, uh, I guess, say is, is standard. But... Spearmen of Kasva are unupgraded. Bloodlines isn't in just yet. And the scouts are actually just going to do the old loop-de-doodle. And the back of Kasva's base is totally open right now. But of course, like you're saying, he can go right over to Spring, who other than one watchtower is more or less completely undefended. And uh, the spearmen are going to take a long time to catch up. So this could definitely be some bloodshed. Yeah, indeed. By the way, Kasva doesn't know that the back of his base is open, I believe. So, so it would be kind of a lot to ask for, to have a forest, like, extend that far into the map. Also, it's two different types of trees, so you should know it's open. Yeah, but I think that he's focusing on different things. He's gonna have uh, fire galleys hitting his fishing eco. The famous Magyar navy comes in here with uh, the Gao. Still, Kasva's gonna have the best eco, but he's gonna have to invest into some fire galleys. And that's a lot of Magyar um, scouts over there. Uh... Did you see all of those units, like, doing nothing for Spring? I'm uh, not sure what happened there. Now, technically, Spring could take this fight. He has the armor, but Lan also has quite a lot of skirms here. <clears throat> Where is Kaswa? That's the question. He's coming in with the archers right now. This could still be an acceptable fight, but this is, like, surviving, but not really having a happy time, I would say. It's surviving and not thriving is what it is. But, well, a lot of idle time, but I mean, at least most of the army will be taken down, but... Yeah, I mean, it's actually an okay-ish trade now. If uh, Spring just turns back with his scouts, he can clean up the army from LAN, and then they can potentially mount a counterattack. And on the left side, Kasva is beating back Dogao for the time being, and LAN 50 eco, Kasva 49, that's the two best ecos in the game. And uh, this is the moment when Dogao and LAN again have very, very low army compared to Spring and Kasva. This is the moment where Spring and Kasva must push. Yeah, Dogao is up on his way to Castle Age, though. It will be the first player up. Lan also clicking, so we will have two players of Heresies in Castle Age before anyone of Spring Kasva. So 
like you were saying, now more than ever, is uh, it's the time to make something happen, and at least they're starting to do that. Some skirms and scouts coming in, able to pick off a lot of these archers of LAN, whose numbers were getting reset anyway, so that's definitely not what you want with going archers, and this is starting to look okay. Well, that's four ranges. Uh, yeah, that's that's four ranges for LAN. Uh, what is a concern is that Dokao is going to have plus two, plus two Magyar Knights very, very soon. And uh, he might even win the war on the left side, so Kaswa is going to lose his fishing eco. I think that you will need Castlage very soon from uh, Kaswa. Now, the thing is that I still like this position for uh, Kaswa and Spring, because they're picking off villagers here from Lan as he's running away. And this is, again, Lan will not really have a lot of archers. What Kaswa has to do is get up to Castlage and go camos immediately to try and counter the Magyar Knights that are coming in. Uh, yeah. Also, I feel like it's just a mistake to just let the Japanese player just chill and have an amazing fish boom. Like, that just seems like a, a recipe for disaster, but still, at least doing a lot of damage on the land. Yeah, that's and true. And I'm surprised that Spring didn't commit there. I feel like he could have just walked around. Yeah, honestly, um, even with that many Voyagers killed from land, he still actually has 51 Voyagers, which is basically as good as Kaswa and Spring, and he's also up to Castlage, so that Japanese fish boom is crazy. Oh, the hole! Oh! Oh, oh the man! Over -chop. And, oh. I mean, it doesn't matter that you have a lot of food eco if you can't really get any other resource because you have all your villagers dead, right? Yeah, unfortunately for Spring, he doesn't have forging, so the villagers are able to survive a little bit longer, probably um, one or two could have died otherwise, but that is still a beautiful, beautiful fight for Spring. 34 kills to 18 deaths for him, and now Dogao is the one who really has his work cut out for him in terms of uh, he's got stuff to do and he needs to do it. Yeah, but in the meanwhile, he's cleaning up the archers of Kasva. Kasva was trying to hide those guys for upgrades, but that's not going to happen. But this is, again, the recipe here. You have the archer player kind of knocked out, even though that's still quite a lot of uh, crossbows for Lan. Probably... Four ranges, man. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he actually has enough eco to make those four ranges work, which is pretty impressive, considering how many villagers he lost. But I guess that's what you get from that many fishing ships. They compensate for your weaker land eco. And uh, I still believe that Kasov will need uh, camos here. Indeed, he is going for camos, bloodlines, and husbandry just coming in. But then again, Spring will probably have to defend here with mangonels against that many crossbows, because that has nothing to defend with. Yeah, and I'm I'm really worried for Spring right now. Like, he's so far away from Castle Age, he's not quite 50% of the way there, he has very little army, and I feel like it's just going to be uh, the let's go kill Spring game right now, and already forced to have villagers on the run. A very picturesque farming village, uh, but one that looks rather undefended at this point. Yeah, at least he's picking off a few villagers here from land, which is a nice one, but on the left side, Kasva also loses the lake, he kind of gave up on that. So, he's gonna go for uh, what appears to be triple stable camos, but also TC added. I'm not sure if he can actually make all of that work together. And uh, Knight's just trying to get the castle destroyed, or TC destroyed. Did I say TC? I wanted to say tower. tower. Yeah, the tower. It, it, it's the, the T sound. Oh, uh, but also, without castle agent, only 700 HP on that tower. Oh, no! Crossbows just patrolling, minimizing arrow fire, and now the camels are going to wish that they were Indian camels. Pretty good upgrades on them, but uh, the crossbow numbers are still sufficient here for land to make them scared. And also another raid on the other gold mine, but remember, Spring is Teutons, and he's going to have pretty nice ca knights, and the knights are kind of caught off guard by those camels. It's actually a pretty good fight for Kaswa here. Uh, trying to claim high ground, land trying to snipe whatever crossbowmen he can. Uh... Personally, I would just try and snipe the camels, since they're going to be doing more damage, but, I mean, kill's a kill. And it looks like this still should be more or less a victory march here for uh, Dugao and Lan. It's five stable knights from Spring right now. Five stable knights. Oh, man. Uh, he does have plus two defense in. And with the Teutons, you also have an extra melee armor, so his knights are actually pretty tanky. But it's still a very heavily disrupted eco, and just across the board, Kaswan spring around 10 villagers behind. Yeah, honestly, this is going back into what we have seen in the previous games. Kaswan spring will be kind of all in Castle Age, but they need to win this. They actually get a nice surround. And uh, 
Remember that Lan and Dogao are completely open, so those knights could just gallop in and kill quite a lot of villagers. And there should be a chance for that. Yeah, the having plus two defense, uh, able to be squeezed in for spring, it makes a very big difference. No husbandry is a little bit sad when you're dealing with ranged units. But I think, well, I guess most of the crossbowmen are dying. That's the, that's the important thing. You need to keep those crossbowmen numbers low. And if you take a look at Dogao's gold mine, that could be a disaster. And they need to win this game right here, right now. They don't see that gold mine up until this point, but this is the moment when Kaso arrives. And if he can actually force off the girl from that gold man, there is no knight reinforcements. Uh, at, at a bare minimum, it's going to force Dogao to turn his attention to his own base, as opposed to uh, helping out Lan, who is currently getting surrounded and killed by Spring. Yeah, but if you take a look at the fishing eco, by the way, from Lan, it's actually getting very, very crowded and messy. And I don't think he's going to have wood to replenish the fish traps over there. So basically, soon he's going to have a lot of idle fishing ships. And it appears that Kaswa is going to try and snipe the stables. I don't necessarily agree with that one. It's too passive. Yeah. You need to make something happen right now if you're Spring and Kaswa. And you have the opportunity to do so. Like, um, 30 seconds ago, the scores were dead even between the two teams. And still, there is a potential. Knights running in here from Spring, going to be looking for some villager kills. Crosswomen are trying to camp the hill as best they can, but there is a little bit of a potential for some surrounding. Yeah, I think that this is exactly what Spring has to do. Just go in, kill the villagers, or either take on that army. I think that destroying the production isn't going to do any good for you here. Other thing, Kasva needs to add a lot more camels himself. Because uh, he's fighting against pure knights. If he just has like five more camels here, that could do wonders in this fight. Uh, no bodkin, but also no plus two defense. Crossbow's able to take the hill right there. This is about as good if I- Never mind the camels! Do something! Oh man, the camel was idle over there. That's so bad for Kasva. That's oh, so bad. Oh, that's so painful. But in the meanwhile, Spring is actually doing a decent job getting a surround on the crossbows. And that's a lot of villagers on the wood line as well. Yes, Lan is just trying to get this choke point as narrow as it can humanly be. But if you take a look at the Ecos now, Lan is dropping beneath Spring in this one. And, uh, I mean, as I said, Lan, look at his fishing Eco. He's going to soon run out of that one. And when that happens, suddenly he's gonna have like 20 idols that cannot do anything for him, and he doesn't really have great villager count. Yeah, uh, Spring Cosmo were able to take the score lead, even if just for a second, and I think that shows that there's definitely still hope for them in this game. Just trying to apply as much pressure as possible, killing the crossbowmen as they come out of the archery ranges is so, so important. Five range production here for Lan, just trying to get as many crossbowmen as humanly possible. But yeah, but it looks like, unfortunately, Spring is kind of running out of gas. Um, honestly, Lan has 11 villagers on wood. You cannot make 5 TCs or 5 arch ranges work on this. And look at Lan's fishing eco. It's gone. Suddenly, Lan is going to have like 40 villagers working for him. So I don't think Spring is going to run out of gas. He just needs to group up and then unleash those guys. Again, a big fight on the left side, which could decide the outcome of the game. And I think that this is uh, in the hands of Kasva. He has enough camos to win this. Oh yeah, I mean, we're looking at 35 mil military for Kasa versus the 9 of Dogao. Dogao has a huge villager count, but... Again, at this point, Magyars are really lacking a bonus. Yeah, like, and... Th there's, there's nothing, really. It's just you have knights, and they're just trying to produce as many as you can, but it's camel plus crossbowmen. Uh, crossbows still need bodkin, by the way. Yeah, you don't have your teammate to help with archers, so you're just gonna die to camels, and... Um, this is the moment uh -huh. when Lan is going to come in to help with the crossbows. Kasva just needs to pull back and this is the moment for Spring to unleash the knights. As Doga is, or Lan is trying to quick call his villagers in, but look at the wood line. Oh, that's pretty painful. Again, why, Oh, why my game knights? crashed. Oh, my no! game crashed. Lita, I'm so sorry. Oh, oh screw man. this. Um, at least it's not the grand finals. Yet. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I still have my game up and running. Just Yeah, fine. I'm going to look at your stream right now. Yeah, yeah. So Crossbowmen are going to be doing some work here for Lan. His numbers are pretty solid. We do have Bodkin now in finally. A lot of units derping out just for no reason, but the Camels are finally plum plummeting in number. And that's why, in general, when Indians aren't involved, you do see uh, Knight Crossbow better than Camel Crossbow. Yeah, honestly... 
I feel like this is a fight that Kasva shouldn't have taken. There, but Lan is down to 47 eco and he has 10 idols. And I think that half of that 47 eco is fishing ships. I mean, look at that massacre. Sure, there's uh, a Lan bunch has of crossbows. villagers right now. <laughs> yeah, that's like, what, 20 idols right now. Lan essentially has no land eco, which means that this is almost impossible to reinforce those crossbows, even though that's actually an awful fight for Kasva over there. Yeah, that's not great. Spring is now going to be running now to the base of Dogao, who seems relatively undefended here. But Dogao's eco is pretty sick, but... Yeah, that's crazy uh, eco. Spring needs to kill quite a lot of voyagers here. Otherwise, basically the same thing is going to happen as game number one. But this could be a great surround on those crossbows on the middle. And if that happens, Lan is not going to have any army to really work with like 50 eco half of it is fishing ships that are idle that's not gonna work and uh in this very Land moment has 12 bills queued up at his one town center feels bad man i mean he's trying to gather what resources he can but obviously his eco is uh it is not great yeah it's just not great i mean still this is far from over and i think that uh spring needs to do as much as he can to keep killing voyagers from the gal this is the moment when you just want to Start smashing the eco. That's actually a great fight for Kasva, though. He's going to sm oh, yeah. uh, smash the army from Lan, and that's where, again, camels could come into play for Kasva, because there's no crossbows from Lan to help out. Lan has 45 eco, and that could also be a lot lower with knights inside the gold mine. Yeah, that is a huge army for Spring at this point. Yeah, just take this military, and it's knights. Just take this fight, I think. Especially yeah. if you have a few knights killing the villagers as well. That is enough for Spring with the extra melee armor of uh, Teuton Knights. And, I mean, Lan is down to 40 villagers. And uh, this is the moment when Kasva needs to go full camel. Because it is essentially a Knights player that's remaining. And uh, you can just deal with that using camels. I don't think that crossbows would be a great move here because, I mean, Dogao still has a great eco. Oh yeah, and his, his production's great as well. Lan is kind of running villagers away. But Dogao has a castle up, so he's able to be defended from the front. I would honestly just, like, full wall myself. His eco is really sick. Kasva's is okay as well. Um, maybe with the crossbow play, Kasva is looking towards Imperial Age, and that is indeed going to be the case. He's going to be ready to click up as soon as that monastery is done. Indeed. So, Imp Arbalest, I still believe that the Camel's play here would just be a little bit safer, but, like, Lan is so dead, he's 34 eco, and the majority of that is fishing ships. So, like, he's not gonna produce any archers here anytime soon, no voyagers on gold. I'm not sure how many voyagers he has on wood, but if you just go to his POV, we'll probably find out. <laughs> Four. Yeah, four on wood, zero on gold, not the way you produce archers. And I think this is the moment when Spring just needs to go in and uh, trade his knights inside Dogao's base to villagers. This is a little disconcerting. Knights taking a great fight with some straggler crossbowmen. This is why you're saying he you needs to go for those camels. Castle will likely go up, but uh, you're losing a chunk of your army that you really don't want to be losing at this point. And if you're looking at a pure 1v1 between Spring and Dogao, as great as Spring's army is right now, Dogao will likely win it just because he's like 50 villagers ahead of Spring. Yeah, but uh, in the meanwhile, there is also Dogao raiding within Spring's base, so Spring had to pull all his knights back. That is actually... Oh, that, a... that's beautiful. Like, abusing the immobility of the Teuton cavalry. Oh, and the camel lets the knights in! Traitor camel! Oh man, I still believe that Spring just needs to send his own knights and force the guy to play the catch-up game at this moment. Like, how do you do that though when you're being outmaneuvered by the the faster Magyar cavalry? I mean, husbandry does make a big difference at this point. Yeah, but you can just essentially defend at home with your few knights you're producing back at home and send your army into the guy's base. The cow cannot afford to just uh, attack with his entire army if his eco is getting destroyed. Oh, well, we'll have to see Corvinian army on the way. Time for some Magyar Hussars, I guess. I don't uh, know I'm not why. Sure what to think about that. I mean, it's going to be a pretty cost-efficient way to go, like... But is there enough gold here for the Gao? That's actually a good question. Um, I mean, I'm on his POV. He's got 26 vils on gold, but it doesn't seem like there's much gold to mine at this point, which is rather odd, because... We shouldn't really be running out of gold at this point, unless this map just doesn't have much gold on it. 
And there is Spring's Blob finally moving up. He needs to hit Dugout. That's it. Just... Lan is so much behind that if you kill, like, 25 Voyagers, let's say, from Dugao, you can just win the game as it is. I mean, Dugao is still a castle age. Spring is also castle, just run in, kill 20 Voyagers on the farms, and then suddenly the stream of knights just stops and gives time for Kasva to just mass his death blob of Arbalests. But again, Yeah, I... but Ma Magyar Hustlers are now on the way, and uh, Dugao's on his way to Imperial Age. He's going to have three castles to defend his base. Make that four in just a second. Yeah, I but you can just run that... past castles and go to the eco. I feel like, again, we are seeing a bit of a passive play here from Spring and Kasva. They are giving time for land to reboom, who is at 50 Voyager, still far from rebooming. And apparently we're going to have Hobbs, well, Pikeman right now from Spring coming in. But he needs to use those cavalry to something. Uh, yeah, sitting around doing nothing, I guess just waiting for the Treb to slowly destroy the castle, but that doesn't seem like an especially powerful game plan. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Togao even grabbing relics, because why not? Uh, but he really needs his own Imperial Age to be coming in, and, I mean, it's two Trebs now, and the castles are gonna be getting, uh, clapped pretty soon, and Magyar Hussars are gonna be absolutely awful against, uh, both Knights and, uh, Arbalests. Yeah, honestly... Um, as I'm getting the information, apparently Springing sending all his gold to Kasva. So probably what's happening is that we indeed don't have a lot of gold. As you see, the players already setting up their trade. And we probably have Arbalests from Kasva. And uh, Spring is just going to play with Pikeman and sling the remaining gold he has to Kasva. So Kasva can actually facilitate his uh, Arbalest push. That's a pretty nasty raid. That's exa this is exactly what Spring should do to Dogao. Just... Run in yeah. and kill Voyagers. Now the cavalry is on the way. Uh, elite Magyar Hussar is on the way for Dogao, but that's a lot of knights, and they have, you know, five melee armor. Yeah, uh, and that's going to that's gonna be a lot of Voyagers. And you kind of have to take that fight over there. In. Magyar Hussar is wishing they were step lancers uh, and had the, the one range. <laughs> Although, yeah, they are elite, and uh, Spring is still a castle age. I think he might have actually thrown away his opportunity to potentially take this fight um, while his opponent's army was weak. Because now, again, yeah, they are really great against 5 melee armor Teuton Knights, but on the other hand, they are still Imperial Age units against Castle Age units. Uh, yeah, and plus 4 defense is now in, so they're going to be a lot more competitive against the ranged units. Uh, they don't even have chemistry just yet, and uh, look at the, the Corvinian army here from Dogao, but it's still nowhere near enough. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to Lan, who is at 81 Voyagers. The clock is ticking very, very badly here for Spring and Kaswa. I think that they have minutes until Lan actually starts massing huge amount of army. In fact, I already see Pikeman coming in here from him. I think yeah, that Japanese Pikeman, like you, just need something at this point. You need something to throw into. Uh... You know the enemy cavalry at this point, because honestly, Kaswa's army isn't especially scary. Yeah, like, uh, I still feel like um, the fact that we still have that those knights chilling at the back is awful. They should be going into Dogao's eco because they give time for Dogao to hold this one alone, 2v1, and this gives a lot of time for land to reboom. But here come the pikemen finally from Spring, and they just absolutely shattered all those Magyar Hussar. I think that's now or never for Spring and Kasva. They need to do a lot of damage to Dogao here. Like, essentially knock him out of the game. Because if not, then Lan is going to come back into the game. And soon we're going to have Japanese arbs, I'm pretty sure. Vi um, Monastery. Lan is, Lan is already back in the game, and he has a lot of Japanese pikemen. Oh man, I feel like Spring and Cusp were way too passive again. I mean, Lan was dead. Lan was legit dead. And by the way, why don't we have Arblast from Cusp here? Arblast would be so good here against the everything basically uh, great question i don't have an answer to you same reason that he doesn't have chemistry i guess uh now both uh wait no okay yeah pikemen are just being made by everybody at this point forward castle here from Kasva. dogao does need a trebuchet but obviously you can't make trebs and magyar hussars at the same time and i feel like this is just a huge gold issue that isn't really uh reconcilable at this point yeah, I mean, they still have a good dead blob, and the fact that they have traps could really turn things around, and they're also setting up at least some trade. 
But as I said, they need to push this one very, very fast because if this turns into pikeman spam, Japanese will be happy to take that. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I guess it's just full pikeman from everybody. Uh, still no halberdier just yet, though, and Dogao is. He's had a lot of space, and oh, the trebuchets are out of position. The Magyar Hussars are obviously some of the very best units in the oh, game. Oh, boy. Siege. Oh, still, man. only one died. That's pretty nice. Yeah, I, I guess, I, I think that Kaso probably screamed there. Like, if I was playing that, I would probably just scream that, oh my goodness, <laughs> don't, please don't. That would have been a way to throw the game, because if those traps go down, that slows down the progress of uh, Spring and Kaso so, so badly. But wait, might be worth pointing so, out I'm, that. I'm sure, I, I think that this is over. I mean, we're looking at around 110 military to 30. Yeah, I think this might be enough, but let's be honest, uh, for a moment it looked like Spring and Casper was about to stall out with their push, and Lan reboomed 107 villagers, so basically, this is the army that Spring and Casper has. If they lose this one, then uh, suddenly it's an even game. I don't think it's going to happen, but they were, like, this was actually a closer chance for Lan to reboom than it should have been. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and I think that in thinking about this game, what was the big difference between this game and the previous two games? It was that they were actually able to do a lot of damage to uh, to Lan and effectively kill him. Yeah, they, they committed they, to a push, that's it. They, they made the same mistakes pretty much as in the last game, but they were just more successful early on in taking out Lan, which is obviously really good, and you know it will likely net them the win in this game. But they really need to, I think, going forward, focus on how they can better utilize uh, the advantages they gain early on. Yeah, if they want to go all-in, they have to commit. That's basically the story of the um, game. This one as well, and the other games, they just have to commit. Uh, Lan is also going into Imperial, so hold on here. I mean... No, uh, it, 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 it's 30 military to like 110 still. <laughs> yeah, I, I also believe that Springhead Kasva should be able to win this one, but... As I said, sometimes they just go very, very passive and stop with the push. If they stop with the push here, then this could suddenly turn into an even game. But if they just press on here, they should be able to finish this game off very, very fast. But they need to be pretty rapid. Um, I guess the shrubs are now just trying to focus down castles? Yeah, other thing that I would love strange. to see is that um, Spring is still pretty low on population. Would be nice. Well, he can actually go for... Light cap, but maybe even just scouts raiding inside Lan's eco would be pretty nice because Lan's pikeman production is actually on the left side, so Lan doesn't really have a lot of army to defend with. And it appears that the grand game plan is just to take down the castles and prevent the Magyar Hussars from being produced. Yeah, I mean, like the Magyar Hussars realizing that they can't take the fight against all of those pikemen and now arms that are still missing chemistry, but otherwise mostly upgraded. Halb on the way, and this was like you. There still is just no army from Lan. Uh, he has his eco back, but it, it's just some pikemen. Yeah, it's only 19. And uh, just to answer a question on chat, why is uh, Spring still in Castle? Uh, it's pretty simple. He's giving all the gold he has to Kaswa, so Kaswa can actually go for our blasts. And uh, he was just going for pikes anyways. He could go up into Imperial, I'm pretty sure, but I think right now they just want to press on and go full Castleage. They're losing quite a lot of wheels, though, but... In the meanwhile, Dogao is losing quite a lot of space as well, I know, I think. It's just a, a, a numbers thing at this point. We're looking at 50 mil to 130, pretty much. Uh, Dogao is trying to tech into every single trash unit in the book. Murder Honestly, Hole is coming like... in here for Kasva, even. Yeah, I saw that. I feel like if this map had more gold and Dogao could go Cavalier, I think they would have won. Yeah, true. Because Dogao had to switch into Magyar Hussar because he knew he didn't have the gold to produce any cavalier. I think that, like, if Magyar Hussars are just so bad in this specific situation that it was, like, just enough for Kasva and Spring to win this. But if there's, like, more gold on the map, I feel like the cavaliers would just smash this. Yeah, I totally agreed. But um, this is one of the reasons why this actually worked out well for Spring and Kasva. And this early aggression really works on a map that is lacking a huge amount of gold. Yes, uh, the military discrepancy is actually closed. Yeah, but what happens if you lose all your castles over here as Dogao? 
Oh, uh, that's actually yeah. a very, very bad fight for Kaswa. That's a horrible fight for Kaswa. We have Japanese halberdiers now, Lita. Spring in the meanwhile actually just stonewalled the entire map. <laughs> and uh, we are going to have quite a lot of trade for him. I feel like what could decide things is trade. But I think now Spring needs Imp as well, and he needs ho his two ton halberdiers. Dogao dropping down to 800 pop, though. So yeah, there is the hubs now. Pop. But as... As soon as Lan was able to reboom into the game, now it is Dogao who is pretty much dead and unable to reinforce with the lead skirms. And without that, the Hobbs will just die to the Trebs. Or the Arbs, more importantly. Yeah. Uh, but there aren't that many. How many Arbs are there? Twelve? Uh, That's not that many. Well, there is a few Chukunus reinforcing. So it's not really the, the end of the world. Dogao trying to repair that castle as much as possible. Spring going into Imperial and tacking into what appears to be champion here. Yep, makes sense. I mean, what, uh, what what's the only threat at this point? It's just Halberdiers. Yeah, it's it's full of trash, so tacking into champions is great. And remember, Spring and Kasva actually has good trade, whereas uh, Lan and Dogao has nothing. So Lan and Dogao legit has zero gold income, basically. It's full of trash. And, yep. I mean, champions aren't really gold heavy. So, you can actually have a pretty nice numbers of champions, like we have seen in the Olympics game, that you don't need a lot of gold income to go champions and just clean up the trash. Yeah, if only Lan had 18 Kataparuto traps, maybe things could be different. Yeah, but here it is, GG's, and unfortunately I can't show the stats, but you probably can, because my yep. game crashed, and uh appears that Spring and Kaswa are just not ready to give up on this one just yet. Nope, and I'm glad they were able to take the win. I think they barely squeaked out a win here, but I still think that they need to step up their game a little bit more and be a bit more proactive if they want to take this series. I 100% agree. So I feel like uh, they won, but this game actually got closer at the end than it should have been. Like... Lan was essentially dead, as you're showing it off. Lan was 40 villagers. If at that point Spring just runs into Dogao Zico and starts killing villagers and essentially trade knights to villagers, then Dogao is gonna drop in villagers and uh, then Kasva has a free boom because Kasva doesn't have to fight. He can go up to Imperial with Arbs and just finish the game, right? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like the, the Arb transition was really slow. Like... I, I don't know. It felt like there was a lot of different things being tacked into. Like, there were knights, there were camels, there were arbs, and then he switched into pikemen as well, and it just felt a little all over the place for my taste. Yeah, I feel like um, I was okay with the arb play. In fact, I think that was a pretty decent decision. Um, the problem was, I think, that uh, Dogao was having a good eco for a huge amount of time, and they couldn't actually capitalize on being able to 2v1 him at the beginning. Yeah. And uh, when you're going for an all-in, every second matters. So you just can't sit back and wait. You have to fight. Definitely, definitely. But now we will be seeing um, the first home map of Lan and Dogao. And what do you want to see them go for? Ooh, interesting. Given, given how this series has played out so far, what do you want to see them go for? Um... I would say that something where late game is actually possible and uh, likely. Now, it is a matter of a question where that is actually possible, because most of these maps are super aggressive. I'm going to open up the map over oh, here. Uh, I don't think Aslan would be great for that. Neither is Cape of Storms. Golden Pit, I think. Golden Pit Golden could be Pit's a, solid. a definite possibility. I oh. also think you could totally go enemy archipelago. I don't think so. I feel like um, in separate 1v1s, I saw Kasu and Spring being capable of beating them. Like, I can see Lan and Dogao 1v1ing um, Spring and Kasu on enemy archipelago. But I feel like uh, Golden Stream could be a little bit more legitimate. Golden Pit. And Is that's... Golden Stream just Golden Hill? But with mangrove shallows and not a hill? Uh, nope. Golden Stream is like Golden Swamp, but you have uh, the mangrove lasting to the edge of the map. So there is like a river splitting instead of a pond. Yeah, yeah. So it's very, uh, very similar to Golden Swamp. Okay. 
Um, the only reason I was saying Enemy Archipelago is because I think that on Arabia, this uh, Cosmoon Spring can 1v1 potentially land in Dogao. I don't think that's possible on Water Map. Ah, uh, true. True, true. I still believe that something like Golden Pit is the most legitimate. It's a standard map, and you know, on standard maps, you would assume that Dogao and Lan are actually better than Spring and Castle, although who knows? They almost lost Arabia. Yeah, yeah. No, this is... I thought this series could be interesting, which is one of the reasons I wanted to cast it, and it's definitely... Even if it's mostly been dominant from Lan and Dogao, it's still interesting to see. And Honestly? I'm getting to, you know... It wasn't completely Look, dominant. If you think about the first two games, it was massive swings back and forth. First game, you almost had land dying. I was actually ready to call the game and say, okay, that's game number one in the hands of Spring and Kasva. But then Dogao appeared with the um, cavalry and somewhat similarly to game number two as well, where they were actually in a great position, but then suddenly Dogao appeared with the swordsman. And in all three of the games so far, what I noticed is that it's always about... Lan is the one getting pushed, but then Dogao is kind of able to build up his eco and just snowball everything with his army. This didn't happen in this game because Lan was damaged so badly. But even now, I, as you said, if there is enough gold for Dogao, this could have been a completely different game. I just realized something. There aren't any cavalry sieves left for Lan and Dogao. Um, yeah, that's something to take uh, pay attention for. So, Teutons are gone, and uh, remember that Spring and Kasva picked a lot of cavalry civilizations, and the Chinese are gone. On the other side, Magyars and uh, Japanese. Indeed, there is no good cavalry civs. What are you gonna do now? And on the other side, I feel like that's still okay. I mean, Byzantines is a solid archer civ, Inca is a solid archer civ. You have enough archer civs for five games. So, Maybe Spring's Mastermind is going to come into play here with the Civ Draft. He picked <laughs> Just all... draft all the Cavalry Civs yeah. so your opponents don't get them. Yeah, you could actually starve him out of um, Cavalry Civs here. And we're gonna go to Golden Pit, apparently. So my prediction was correct. There you go. Okay, so for Golden Pit, what do you think about the remaining Civs? Oh, did the game not start yet? Yep, the game hasn't started yet. Oh, okay. Um, for Golden Pit... Whew. Um, if you're going to go for Turks, you can go for Turks now. Yeah, that's what? basically the place to go for Turks, but I feel like Mayans and Britain... Uh, uh, the problem is you need some sort of cavalry sieve, right? Like, Mayans and Britons are both super good on Golden Pit, but you can't go Mayans and Britons. That is, uh, that is overkill. Yeah, especially... Honestly, I would think that uh, Byzantines will be one of the sieves for yeah. uh, Spring's team. Because if you think about that, there is a lot of Archer sieves. This is the moment where it's like that you are going to have either Britons or Mayans. You're just going to go for Byzantines. Faster Imperial helps quite a lot on Golden Pit, as we see. And... Uh, you're just gonna go straight skirms? I feel like Spanish is going to be the other Civ pick. Oh, I'd, I'd go for Bulgarians. Oh, Bulgarians. That's also true with the Conics, but I feel like Spanish Conks could be an idea. I think that you would use that in sort of in place of the Archer Civ. But I feel like I like Byzantines a lot for all the reasons you were saying on Golden Pit. But that Byzantines are an Archer Civ, right? So I'd yes. want a Cavalry Civ. And Which I, is... I like all of the, the crap post potential of uh, Golden Pit. Honestly, if I think uh, over the Spanish thing, I think the only reason to go for Spanish here is because of Conquistadors. They are an excellent Paladin Civ, but the problem is that you are not really going to trade on Golden Pit. So the Spanish trade bonus might be more useful on other maps than Golden Pit. So indeed, you might be right. Either Slavs or uh, Bulgarians. Slavs could also be a legit pick here. But yeah, you, you might be right. And about Slavs are like... Slavs, I know they're not an AOC Civ, but they, they kind of feel like one. They're just very, very sort of standard, I guess. Um, and Bulgarians are a much weirder Civ. So it could be like a comfort thing as well. Yeah, that's true. I always feel like... Uh, the tricky thing about Bulgarians is that you want to go for Conics, but it's easier to go for Scouts into Knights with the uh, Slavs, especially having a great eco behind it, in comparison to going for Conics 
Then you kind of have to protect the creep costs if you lose them for whatever reason, especially in early Imperial to Trebs, then you don't have military production. So I feel like getting your Conics numbers up is much harder than getting your Knight numbers up. So I feel like Slabs could be a tiny bit better, especially for aggressive play. Yeah, I was, uh, someone in my chat pointed out, Stirrup Knights. Stirrup Cavalier are really good. Yeah, but um, that assumes that you don't go for um, Conics at the beginning. Which is yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's actually better to go for knights and then switch into conics. Yeah, in the in the long run, definitely switch into conics, but uh, you can't start with conics, I believe, on this map. If you had to select between Britons and Mayans for uh, heresy, which would be the safe pick for here? Uh... Mayans. I feel like it's a little bit more open and a little bit more like map control focused, and I feel like mines are a bit better than Britons in that regard. Honestly, like, Britons I just, just want... want like one area that they just don't need to move around in, and I feel like you can kind of get picked apart in the back in Golden Pit. Yeah, honestly, it's super weird because I just wanted to say Britons just for the same reasons of being uh, able to control the middle with the Britain long-range crossbows and the Arabs. Yeah, I, I, like, you're going to want to be super focused on the middle, but there's a lot of potential for counterattacking on the not middle, and I feel like Britons are going to struggle in that, much more so than Mayans. Um, also, I like the fact that Mayans have the longer-lasting resources, and there isn't a ton of stone on this map, unless you changed it for some reason. Um... So you can have more castles, potentially. And, and, and plume archers are better than longbowmen. Uh, yeah, that's true. But again, plume archers might struggle to fight up hills, especially like, if there is like free castles from the Britons there. Pushing Britons is very hard. But on the other hand, Britons are not going to have siege ram, and they are vulnerable to siege rams, which is yeah. something that Byzantines have. I wish we could just see the freaking game, man. Uh, yeah, I am thinking the same thing. Apparently, they are going to launch in this very moment. So soon we are going to find out. But as I said, this series is turning out to be a lot more interesting than uh, we thought it would be. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, but, I got uh... a question for you from chat. This is some top-level AoE numbers, and you probably know the answer. How do conics with stirrups against generic paladins um so they conics with stirrups i believe still trade well against paladins but very very barely um like it's a very slight thing and the advantage of conics isn't so much how good they are as a paladin substitute but it's a lot harder to counter Konics than it is to counter Paladins, because obviously the, dis the dismounted Konic being in infantry and not dying to Halberdiers as much is a big uh, selling point of the unit. So they do all right against Paladins. It's pretty even, but I think that uh, overall the infantry bit is the more important aspect. Oh my goodness. You're not going to believe this Sif combo. I see it. What is this? This is game number four, an Empire Wars duo between Dogao and Lan facing off against Spring and Kasva. And we have Spring playing with Slavs here, which is amazing in yellow. But what's the motivation of Kasva picking Spanish here? Or like, whichever civilization. Oh yeah, I forgot the overlay, but now it works. So, uh, what's the motivation of having essentially two cavalry civs? And, of course, Spanish can go Conquistadors, but still, I mean, you had a bunch of good Archer Civs. Why would you go for two saves that are great Cavalry Civs, and are you even going to have a final Cavalry Civ left for the final game if we go into game number five? Oh, you have Bulgarian still. Ah, uh, yeah, true that. But, I mean, oh. you still have, I think, some Archer Civs. Spring is taking quite a lot of beating on his scout already as Lan is playing. Honestly, I'm not so satisfied with uh, the civilization picks of Heresy either, having Britons and Italians together. Yeah. But it's not like they had any other cavalry if to choose from, right? I mean, Italians still get fully upgraded cavalier, right? So it's fine for the time being. 
yeah, like that's going to be a super weird matchup. And apparently, Golden Pit is going to be the map where everybody is just going to play FC with the exception of uh, Kasva, who is sending in some scouts to try and pick off some villagers. Kasva is going to be fully walled, and uh, let's see if he can actually snipe that will. Yes, he will. Oh, I totally missed that. Where's the... Is it at land's base? Uh, it wasn't the Gauss base. Oh. Oh, I, I didn't. I hadn't super sped it up. Yeah, that, that actually is important, just to be in sync. It's the best way to get in sync is just to super speed it up. And Spring is actually playing yeah. Skirms, interestingly. Uh, he doesn't want to die to archers before he can get to Castle Age. I mean, that's always a concern with Britons, right? Yeah, but he's not walling. Like, Spring just refuses yeah. to wall. And Spring has a very, very wallable map. In fact, every player has a super wallable map, with the exception it's of the Gal. man. Yeah, Dogaz is actually pretty unfortunate, <laughs> um, but in general, Golden Pit's a very wallable map, and it's why some people don't really like it. Personally, I think it would be a bit more interesting a map if the woodlands were larger but fewer. Um, be a bit more open, and I think there'd be a bit more of a dynamic between fighting for the middle and then fighting for the top. But, well, we'll have to see here. Just a little bit of uh, fighting back and forth, Dogao Eco. Not really the greatest, but it's all right. Yeah, indeed. Forging coming in here for Spring, and, uh, well, he's gonna have quite a lot of skirms here to push back uh, Lan, and also adds a few spears. Imagine if this wasn't slabs, but let's say Byzantines with those spears and skirms, and this is perfectly fine, but Dogao is diverting all the scouts to help. This is going to be a little bit dangerous for Spring. He cannot afford to throw away his army like that. No, uh, in that fight he did actually have plus one, plus one to nothing. And Lan still has nothing. Is he just saving up for Castle Age? This uh, is such a greedy play. And the skirms are even separated from the spears because of pathfinding oh. or whatever, but this is going to be a disaster. Disaster, man. Spring is going double stable scouts, by the way, for whatever reason, but his opponent is fully bored. <laughs> I don't even understand this. It's like he's playing a Hun War, man. It, it, it's literally, you could think that Spring is playing Huns right now if it weren't for, you know, the houses and the wrong architecture set. And there's a third stable! <laughs> what is it? What is... What is Spring doing? Triple stable scouts against two players that are fully walled. Oh, man. I, I don't get it. He's having to already evacuate a wood line because, you know, he's not walled. I think there's even a hole. Yeah, there's definitely yeah, there a, is a hole on the left side. And the clan is already going to Castle H here. I feel like um, someone said on the chat that as Spring has uh, what appears to be a search table now and a Suna market. I don't know why, because he doesn't really have anything to buy or sell. So the thing is that someone said that... Uh, Spring also lost Red Bull Volo partially because of his draft in the qualifiers. I haven't, I don't remember his draft, but I have to say that he's making some questionable decisions. I mean, I think the Civ duo can work. I just, I don't like how they're playing it. Yeah, Kasuma uh... is going scouts into Conquistadors, and the problem was that Spring actually moved out, and he's playing. If he went for one stable scout and skirms, I ex okay say that okay I approve that. But what's the motivation of triple stable scouts? I don't know. Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like the scouts are fully upgraded, but Lan's gonna run home, and his greed is paying off as he will be in Castle Age. Dogao will be in Castle Age, and they're just going to have a pretty sizable tech advantage, and you know they can add extra TCs, no problem. Yeah, like, what I could see here is that Spring is trying to go for uh, Knights, like triple stable Knights, and in the meanwhile, let's get some uh, Conquistadors for Kaswa. but in reality, I mean, Spring Scouts aren't really going to help at all, the Gao is fully walled, you have uh, Lan fully walled as well, it's not like those Scouts will do any damage, even double stable Scouts would have been pretty wasteful, I would say. You know what's better than triple stable scouts? Quadruple stable scouts. Uh, no, but Spring has clicked up the castle age, so it's just going to be for quadruple stable knights! Okay. Yeah, he actually sold some stone, but he's still 20% towards castle age only. Now, if he fully wars himself, he could actually defend, because his TC is covering the majority of the part. 
So I think that he could be fine against those archers. And he's picking off a Voyager in the middle that was trying to drop a TC. You can build TCs everywhere in the middle, right? Oh, fail, fail. fail oh, that's fail. actually pretty big for Spring. Denying that TC for some time. Uh, yes. Just a quick question. In the middle, it's you can still town center everything, right? It looks like there's like swamps and stuff. I think you can add TC everything. Um, okay. This is uh, the RBW version. I think it's oh, RBW1, okay. where we had the Golden Pit. Spring losing uh, what could be a lot of villagers on the wood line. I think Castle was just pinging him like a madman, and there's also the guy <laughs> coming in with knights. This is where not being in Castle is going to hurt very badly, I believe. And not being fully walled. I mean, he's throwing down some panic walls right now, but that's not going to last too long. And he doesn't even realize, I think, that he's actually open from the south. Um, he should. I mean, it's it's a lot to assume that that the woodline extends. The fifth stable is being added. You know what's better than four stable knights? Five stable knights. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The problem here for Kasva is that he's going conks, but... The Conquistors are pretty vulnerable against archers at the beginning. So... In this very moment, as long as those crossbows are still there, those Conquistors can't really take good engagements. Yeah, in fact, in general, Spanish are, are pretty awful against Britons. Uh, Spring trying to uh, divert with a counterattack, but the town center will be established in the middle of the map. Uh, that is only the... Oh, never mind. Uh, Land is on three TCs, does have ballistics, I think, is the university. And Dugao on three TCs as well. This is looking rather grim. Yeah, and honestly, this isn't really, like, Dugao and Lan playing better in terms of gameplays, because this is just, why do you go for triple stable scouts on a map that's easily volleyable? The only weird thing about, you know, uh, Lan and Dugao with their... This game was that Italians and Britons is kind of weird, but when you think that they don't really have any great cavalry saves anyway, Italians are at least, like, semi-okay, and beyond that, they're just playing completely standard and just kind of wrecking face. Yeah, and at this point, Sprink has no eco, so this is essentially 2v1 versus Kasva. You have five stables to produce knights on, but you have three villagers on food. I don't understand why Sprink did this. And actually, in thinking about it, you know your opponent is going to go for either Britons or Mayans. Why would you go for Spanish, then? Like, Conquistadors are bad against both Mayans and Britons. Like, yeah, you've got great upgrades on them right now, Caspa, but you only have, like, what, six of them? Caspa's TC in the middle is also getting denied, so he has to run for his life. And meanwhile, the guy was just casually booming with uh, three TCs sending in the knights. Mangano is coming in here to reinforce. Oh, uh, Mangano. Oh... Not a good yeah, shot. The knights. And those are Britain crossbows at 8th range. Yes, they are. Oh, and the knight even be able to get a hit off, make that 2, and a and... 3, and a dead Spring and Kasva. Yeah, they are just so dead. I, I don't understand. Like, I think that Spanish and Slavs could have worked. Although, they are actually going to clean this one up, and... So many times today we have said that someone is dead. Are they gonna clean this up? I think they will. Uh, if they do, it's gonna be like trading the entire army. Yeah, they will trade it off. So the... Importantly, the Conquistadors are all, all but one of them are dying. Yeah, the problem here is that right now Spring is 34 eco. And like, he's trying to reboom into this one, but he sold his stone to get up to Castle H here. He's just so exposed, and Kasva, he is playing with uh, two town centers and one castle where the producing conquistadors. A second castle comes in now, but I think that he needs to do a lot of damage here to probably the Gao because he cannot really push Lan with all those crossbows around. Yeah, this is going to be pretty tricky, but Togao is going to have a castle soon, uh, can switch into some genbos maybe, because um, I mean, I guess you don't really want to go for knights long term, but... Uh, it probably doesn't matter a whole lot. Like as we were saying, Springs at 35 villagers. Kasva even has a worse eco than both of uh, Lan and Dogao. Yeah, I and yeah, I feel like the draft in the long run was actually better for Spring and Kasva. They actually took away, as Spring is gonna call it, they took away the cavalry sieves, but then went for an extremely weird sieve combo. They went for they went for the cavalry sieves. Like, if you noticed, I think in every single game, both Kasva and Spring went for Cavalry. 
Yeah, but I mean, especially when you ha should have the Civ advantage. Like, with Byzantines and the Slavs in this one, you should have a big Civ advantage over Italians and Britons, I would say. Yes. But you need to actually have someone, like, commit to archers, which we actually barely saw in this series, if at all. Yeah, indeed. This was probably the most one-sided of all games, though. It's very surprising that we saw this one happening. I don't understand... I don't understand the Civ selection, like the pairing, and I don't understand the triple stable scouts build at all. In fact, if you and like not play... Walling. Um, I can just quote MBL here. When uh, Golden Pit or Gold Rush was actually in the map pool, he was playing as a low rated guy. And, you know, he was just flaming him just like MBL does all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, MBL was like, he was doing FC and the guy just started going for scouts and towers. And MBL said, there is no point going for a fuel age pressure here. Because he's able to defend against that. And indeed, MBL just got to cast age and uh, pushed back the towers pressure. This map is so yeah. well wallable that unless both of the gold spots are extremely exposed it's almost impossible to deny a fast castle here with feudal age army especially in empire wars yeah definitely definitely and with but that we'll have a uh, land and dogal going forward indeed uh at least spring and kasva made them run for their money there were quite a lot of good moves from spring and kasva i feel like this could have gone differently if a few minor things are changed. In every game they played, basically they had the chance to win. Game number one, if they choose to kill Dogao instead of Lan, that could have been a win. Kawasan, if they commit to the push in like mid-late castle before Dogao was able to switch into the Swordsman, they could have won that. This one, if they just don't go for a strategy that's just not gonna work on this map, they could have actually won this as well. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. It was, it, it's at least they can learn from these games. Like, it's not like, oh, they're just, you know, outmatched, outgunned, and there's like nothing they can do. There's definitely things they can tweak around, and then they'll be looking like an even stronger team, uh, hopefully, uh, if they keep playing uh, like they do now. Yeah, honestly, they played very, very good, and uh, it's definitely a positive that they were able to make um, Dogao and Lan run for their money, and Dogao and Lan are not weak players, in fact, both of them are top 10, so the fact that they made this competitive, and they were actually just close to winning in every game, just couldn't finish off the games with the exception of one, means that, you know, they are actually very, very solid in Empire Wars, and uh, it's a shame that we don't see them, they just need a little bit of a better decision-making. I think that it wasn't the execution. Oftentimes you see teams getting defeated by stronger teams because the execution is just better for uh, the stronger team. But in this one, the execution was just as good as uh, Dogao's team. It was about the decisions that they made, I believe. And just the overall uh, strategery. That is I correct. Think, like, just overarching game plans, I think, were a little bad. So, with this one... Heresy moves forward, and uh, they will either play against the Polish team, White Eagle, or the favorites of the other matchup, Doubt and Slam, potentially Nili, as well. So, we'll see about that. Thank you for joining me. And Yeah, uh, of course. was a great um, casting with you. Yeah, always. So uh, Yeah, it's a, it's a fun tournament. I definitely enjoyed casting it, and uh, best of luck to you going forward. Okay, thanks a lot, and indeed, shout out to Ornlu, who is also casting on his Twitch. So, thanks again for joining me, and uh, I guess we'll see each other soon. Yep, see you, man.